Martin, uh, you've, you've argued in the paper that an account of uh, equality of opportunity that's limited to the economic and political domain and that seeks to address um, social luck um, has greater coherence than an account which ranges over the full domain and which applies to natural and social luck. Rather than reprising that argument, um, what I'd like to ask you uh, now is, uh, in a sense, why this matters, why this matters for the way in which we think about our world. Right, so I think equality of opportunity is a very odd political idea because it, it's both incredibly popular, everyone's in favour of equality of opportunity, but at the same time it's often perhaps not terribly well understood. There's a, a degree of unclarity about what it is that we're actually interested in when, or what it is that we think is valuable when we think about equality of opportunity. Um, so um, I think what, what I was trying to do was trying to um, investigate whether there is a, a coherent uh, particular idea about the equal um, the equal distribution of chances to occupy jobs, whether that's jobs in, in terms of economic positions or, or jobs in terms of positions of political power, whether there is a, uh, a particular principle about the distribution of those opportunities that has a particular kind of significance that's, that's different to uh, our more general uh, concerns about distributive equality. So um, when we ask ourselves, uh, for example, whether it's a bad thing that some people are materially much worse off than others, is that something we should be concerned about? Is that something that's uh, one of the concerns of, of social justice? Um, it's the concern that we might identify there the same as the kind of concern that we might have if we think that, um, that people have unequal opportunities to occupy particular kinds of of uh, political or economic positions, or is it, or is it different? Um, so that that probably sounds quite, quite abstract. So um, to give it a, a little bit more, uh, a bit more focus, I, I just um, imagine two different worlds. Imagine one world where, all things considered, there was no inequality. Everyone was equally well off in terms of their total well-being. But there was a very unequal division of either political opportunity or economic opportunity. Perhaps there were very severe class divisions, or perhaps that was a world in which, um, in which we had something like a Burkean natural aristocracy. But nevertheless, everyone who did very badly, everyone who, in terms of their opportunities, was compensated in some other way. They were given, given money or given goods or given something to make up for it. Do we think that such a world is problematic? Do we think that, that it's good enough to compensate people for, um, for some lack of, of opportunity just, just by giving them other kinds of goods? Or do we think there's a very specific kind of uh, concern that we should have about those sorts of opportunities? If the argument of my paper is right, then there's a very particular set of concerns that, that we ought to have when we think about social justice that are connected to people's interest in particular kinds of agency and, and, and in a particular kind of standing as self-respecting agents among others within a, within a just society. There's that particular kind of concern that means that actually the distribution of opportunities is important in and of itself and isn't something that we can somehow compensate for um, by giving people other kinds of goods or other kinds of benefits. There's a kind of deep and special and particular significance to to opportunities within a just society. So, for example, uh, one shouldn't be able to sell one's vote. Exactly. So, and that's a wonderful and very helpful analogy. We don't think that it would be okay um, for some people, um, or, or, or even I suppose if one didn't think about selling one's vote. Imagine, imagine a world where only some people had the vote, but those who didn't. Uh, who didn't have the vote were compensated for it with with a, a got cash I prize. IPads. Got got iPads. Got <laughs> got nice stuff. We don't. We think that would be a kind of injustice. Well, similarly, um, economic and political opportunities are like that. If my view is right, they're a kind of entitlement of citizenship, and they're not. Uh, they're not 
something that's of interest to people only because it makes people better off or makes them happier or because people derive some other kind of benefit from them. They have a particular kind of value that connects with people's status as citizens in just the same way that the entitlement to vote has. Does that have any particular implications in your view for, in a sense, the organisation of economic life? I mean, in political life one can see it has certain implications in, in terms of everybody getting votes, everybody being able to stand for offices, having fair opportunities to stand for offices where you know that might support women-only shortlists under some electoral systems, for example, um, or black-only short, shortlists. Um, but in the economic sphere, does, does it have any sort of specific kind of policy orientation, if you sure. like? I mean, just to say a, a little bit more about the, the political sphere, um, one very uh, telling difference, I think, between let's say the British and the American political systems, is that here we have particular kinds of restrictions that might look like restrictions on, on liberties. So, for example, um, the fact that political parties can't buy as much TV time as, as they'd like to. Um, there's certain kinds of restrictions on what political candidates can um, can spend in their, in their election campaigns. We have restrictions that would be thought of as impermissible restrictions on individual liberty uh, let's say, under the American system, but which have a justification in terms of providing kind of equal opportunity and, and stopping uh, stopping particular kinds of um, particular kinds of economic inequalities spilling over into into the political domain. But to answer your your question in terms of what the implications of my view would be for um, for how we think about um, how we think about the regulation of of economic life and how we think about the provision of particular uh, opportunities to people. Um, I think one, one really significant part of it is the thought that no matter how generous a welfare state might be in terms of redistribution, no matter how much um, an, a, a state did in order to compensate people for particular kinds of lacks of, of opportunity, um, and in a way that's a very odd way to start, talk about this given that we live in a time where welfare states are becoming less um, less generous but no matter how much a welfare state could do in terms of redistribution it's much more important to put people in a position whereby the state does what it can to undermine and to counteract particular kinds of social inequalities um, that might stop people from being able to um, to enjoy the kind of economic opportunities we think they they should do so I suppose one one consequence of this is that thinking that it's important to invest in early years education, thinking that it's a demand of justice that the state does what it can um, to, to help those from more socially deprived backgrounds to have the kind of educational and then economic opportunities that they might have, that shouldn't be thought of as just the same as any other kind of uh, social spending that might just raise people's level of well-being. It's more important than that because creating the preconditions for people's economic agency, giving them the right kind of opportunities, is a very fundamental and very special demand of a, of, of, uh, for having a just society. Martin, thanks very much. Thank you very much.